Hello, welcome. Welcome to the Expert Talk Show. Today, we have a special guest and he has the experience as a sales professional, not just a sales professional who just set the appointments or they close the deals, who is also experienced in full stack sales. So lead generation, lead optimization, lead nurturing, and then uh, taking the appointments, setting the criteria to do that entire activity, closing the deals, and also beyond sales cycle. He also has the experience of recruiting um, almost uh, tens of hundreds of people for the remote sales. And he, on a daily basis, speaks to hundreds of people. And then whoever are eligible, his best of his interest could be able to uh, recruit them for the dozens of companies. Will Bo is a wonderful human being. Whenever I had an interaction with him, he never left me without adding value, without giving clarity, without uh, any conversation that I had with him. I am very much impressed. And I feel the professionality. I feel a genuine uh, humanity, the way that he approaches conversation, the way he involves uh, any any kind of discussions that we had. I really liked. Thank you so much, Will, for uh, giving this opportunity, even though you are so busy in activity. And this oh, wonderful uh, weekend, um, I thought of uh, having it and then uh, um, uh, get it go. So Will also, as a setter, uh, could able to bring 300K, 300K in revenue. And uh, in his lifetime, he might have got millions of revenues for the companies that he worked for. Today in this show, I wanted to uh, share his experience as much as possible so that if you at all you wanted to look at a remote sales or a remote work, Will will help because Will is going to build his brand in the remote work environment where he wants to put sales is one of the aspects of overall remote work possibility. The future is in remote work. So welcome Will and uh, thank you so much for accepting this show. And I'm looking at introducing yourself. Let me know uh, what you want apart from the introduction that I gave or, or, or the, anything that I missed. And let me know to the audience is going to uh, YouTube, Facebook, my page, my profile. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for the very kind intro, Chandra. It means a lot to be here. Thank you, and thank you, thank you. Uh, it's, a, it's a fantastic opportunity. Um, yeah, I guess just as a quick intro, my name's Will. Uh, I had been in sales for around three years now. Um, and, um, you know, I had the wonderful opportunity of coming across remote sales while I was actually in college. Um, so uh, I'm sure that's something we'll be talking about here today. But um, it was a really unique opportunity as a 19 year old to come across, um, you know, a way to, you know, learn about business in the real world, connect with people, learn about branding. Um, and I've just felt like I've developed a ton professionally, but also personally in the mm. last couple of years. So, um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of where I've come from. How do you describe in uh, two words or three words, you were journey in remote sales, just three words, if you wanted to say. <laughs> Good question. Um, growth, connection, and opportunity. Wow. So met a lot of people had a lot of op different opportunities that it was simply came to the door and I opened up the door and, um, and it just have learned a ton from all of it. Uh, I, really I wouldn't like be that. here. Oh, go ahead, please. Yeah. I really like that growth connection and opportunity. Really like that. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, I guess I would say I wouldn't be here without, um, you know, just, the mentors I've had and, you know, great connections like yourself. So it's, this space is really, and just business in general I've learned and life in general is about the, the people you meet and creating mutual value between each other. You know, awesome. um, obviously there's so much room for improvement for me as a person, but being able to see what I can do to help the other person out and learn something from them 
Um, and also just reapplying that principle over and over again, kind of like if you're the reinvest income into investment cap, or, you know, that investment capital into yeah. different things. Yeah. It's the same thing with people. Um, so that applies in recruiting and sales hmm. and just everything in general when it comes to the people. Awesome. Awesome. So you have spent a lot of your time as a setter and then uh, uh, set the very solid revenue generating opportunities for the businesses, right? So if at all you wanted to share the world of setter, the value of the setter, and then the activity of the setter, appointment setting opportunity in the remote sales, what are the critical factors a prospective appointment setter should look into? What kind of person he should be or she should be? Uh, what kind of skills that you want them to build? You, you can answer yeah. this question based on being a setter rather than recruiter. <laughs> I will <laughs> come to the recruiter part of this little bit time. Yeah. Sure. Um, on your own experience, unique experience. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So, in, you know, I was fortunate to have a, to work a couple different setting roles. Um, so a couple of years back, I worked with an agency. Uh, it was a consulting agency, um, mm -hmm. but you know they had a great offer, and I was doing you know triage settings. So I was doing high volume dials each day, um, you know setting appointments with the the, the advisor or the closer, and um, you know helping in that first touch process. I mean they did marketing and they had funnels and all that. Okay, but I was that okay. first that first connection with the in the inside the company, uh, mm -hmm. then see if they're qualified and then place them. But in terms of principles, I would say being able to develop your sense of curiosity, so curiosity, mm. um, communication, um, okay. being able to willing to put in the hours and effort of just high volume. You know, mm -hmm. when you, just like with anything else, I'm sure people hear this all the time, whether it's sports or school yeah. or whatever, as long as you practice and you put in the work, you put in the, the volume. I mean, mm -hmm. if you're doing 70 to a hundred dials a day, every day, five days, six days a week, you're going to get to thousands, if not tens of thousands of calls in your time with that company. And each of those calls, a lot of them are not going to answer. You're going to get rejected a lot of times. But that is going to develop you into a better, honestly, for me, a better person, but also just a better professional. Awesome. So awesome. develop those things. Um, and then in, in terms of, I guess, more technical things, something I realized has helped a lot is, you know, try to once again have that curiosity understand where they're coming from keep the setting appointment yeah you know, 10 to 15 minutes but also don't set the appointment too far out so you know within if you can within 20 to 48 hours try to negotiate that time uh because that's going to give them that that shot of showing up to that next call and another thing to note is that all these if, if someone's like come into the space because they want to become a high ticket closer as a mm. lot of, you know, like that's like the, the, the marketing lingo yeah. when people yeah. first come yeah. to the space. Yeah. If they want they to program become... to do that. Exactly. Second yeah. is the... a step to the next step. <laughs> One of Chandra and I's uh, mentors actually has said before that the way setting is closing without taking the credit card. It's the same right. exact thing. Exactly. Exactly. That's true. Yeah. And you're, instead of closing a deal, well you're said. closing a time. You're closing a second call. That yep. is their commitment to show up to potentially become a client. That is what setters do. So having that mindset of, you know, as, as soon as you enter the space, you, you, you might see that there's, there's, in some aspects, there's a hierarchy and from some people in some aspects, there isn't a hierarchy. It just depends who you talk to. But for me, you don't want to have that hierarchy of like setting is like bottom of the crop and, and closing, you know, the, it is just know, another, an illusion. 
It's an illusion. Exactly. We're all salespeople. Mm -hmm. And, you know, J.D. Daly, one of our mentors as well, yes. ha has said for years now that there are closing gigs where you don't make anything and there's setting gigs where you can make 10, 15K a month. It yes. just depends on what role you have and how you're positioning yourself. Awesome. So That's really insight. great. <laughs> so the person should be able to be curious enough to understand the requirement of the other person, understanding what kind of service that they are going to do. And then they yeah. should be able to communicate. Uh, they have communication skills. And then they are they should be ready to put in the effort, number of hours, and then uh, the, the daily activity of 100 dials, 120 dials, they should be able to do. Generally, 100%. You know, it's not it's not a requirement to do that stuff to get like a closing job, but as you know, some people yep. also say it's not a requirement at all. But it does help if you're just trying to get sales experience and you know really developing your core. Really yeah. good for that. Um, another, I might be throwing in some because another thing that I want to say, like all my all the things I know come from the mentors in this space and the great people that I've been able to connect with. So uh, if I regurgitate, regurgitate some, uh, take some stuff, it's not my uh, idea. I'm just sharing it. But um, right. another thing from JD, uh, you know, he, uh, you know, I was going to say what he's going to say, but um, if I think of it again, I'll come back to it. But just, he has come up with so many great things of like how to view the space, um, there's so many other thought leaders here that even if you don't make this a career in this space, connect with people here because these are the sort of peoples that you will think of for the for the lifetime of your professional career. Yeah. You know, that's another benefit of the space, not even for finding a job sometimes, but just making, you know, outworldly connections of just some of the amazing people here. So that's another suggestion. Awesome. Super. Cool. So um, when you say um, the triage calls. Yeah. So you, generally based on all your uh, past experience, uh, do you uh, make using phone or virtually through Zoom or Google Meet, something like that? How, how are the most of these triage calls went? Yeah, so uh, at my last uh, setting role, it was interesting because um, we we tried. I was like, uh, you know, they they brought me on as as their setter, and they're trying to, you know, build up their their sales team a little bit. So they're kind of experimenting of what works. Does it work on Google Meet? Does it work on Zoom? Phone call? Okay. To be okay. honest, probably. Uh, which yeah, one probably, works better? They are like testing the. Yeah, they were testing a DM setting. So that's another thing. Oh, I was able awesome. to kind of, as a setter in this last offer I was on, I got to try it all. Just like see what works, what doesn't work, experiment. And that was awesome. really cool just to understand that. And to be honest, it probably depends on the offer. You know, every offer is set up differently. Some people want you to only do DM. Some people only want you to do Zoom, phone call. Mm. Um, but just as a general rule of thumb, um, you know, phone calls are you know, a great first contact. You're calling them, um, you know, you're, you're getting the, the reps in. And, uh, and I think that's what I was going to try to say for what JD has mentioned before. He likes to take it as if you were, if because he came from a door-to-door -door background. Yep. If you were to go in your neighborhood, you, you know, you, had, you wanted to sell um, something in person and you went door-to-door -door and you knocked on the door, um, obviously you're going to probably get rejected most of the time, but instead of thinking that as you get rejected, what if they gave you, you know, $5, they say no to you, but the slam the door on you, a $5 bill gets printed outside their door, outside their yep. mailbox. Yep. That is the way to look at it because yep. every single rejection you get on the phone, that is a step closer to that qualified prospect saying yes, buying the deal from you. And because yeah. in this remote sales space, a lot of the offers are high ticket, um, that literally is the case. You can do 200 calls, get rejected a lot. And then once you get that one, finally get that one deal, 
and you know it's a five six grand deal and you get a solid commission it yeah. adds up so it's yeah. a lot of averages game in sales well. exactly i was about to use the same thing oh it, it, they need to understand the law of averages and then possibilities so every you know i used to say in, in my trainings my programs i used to say people your no no is a k n o w no and we need to know about ourselves our uh, goal and the other person's situation better we need to know the communication i really like the point that curiosity and also the way simplified the jd it simplified um every slam of the door is just like a printing a note <laughs> i really like that exactly awesome so somebody who is trying to get into a uh, uh, um setting role or into the remote sales have you um, ever found one particular skill or two particular uh, mindsets helped them very well when they are actually approaching the recruiters or um, business owners offer owners yeah any particular element that uh, these prospective candidates are having which made them leverage any anything is that because i don't want you to mention those words i want ra coming from you from genuine experiences yeah so there's a great book out there it's called uh, give or take by um, adam grant highly recommend it and the mindset of that is you know there's there's takers um there's people that transact and then there's the givers Mm. So if you come from a mindset of when you when you get in contact with someone you're providing value you're trying to give something to them without mm. anything and expectation of return mm. karma is going to come your way and you're going to end up creating that trust in that relationship mm. and then something's going to be passed forward onto you. So when you when someone is um trying to figure out a way to you know, the common mindset is like, I just want to get a job. You know, mm. I'm interested. You know, you see the comment section all the time on, on Facebook. Mm. You see a job post, interest, interest, interested. Everyone and is interested. Though. Who is really wanted to serve? Who is willing to serve? Who is prepared to serve? That's what. Right. Exactly. So everyone is looking for a job. Who really wanted to and, offer something is more important. Yeah. And, and, and I think... at least for me when i was looking into people cuz i spoke with people as a recruiter of all sorts of different experience levels yeah some people yeah. had a couple hundred grand under their belt some people had 10 20 million under their belt over over 15 year career i personally my philosophy and this was something that um my manager at the time she was amazing when i was working over there okay. she said well we're we're in the business uh You know the way we like to look at over here at coaching sales is we're not headhunters we're matchmakers matchmakers so we're matchmakers awesome so just like if you're going to do networking and you're trying to connect with another person and create a relationship that is one of the best ways to look at um you know human capital and 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 connecting people in terms of like everyone everyone can gain experience it just awesome. give give the person time but character and understanding their values and understanding their work ethic mm. i mean that needs to be in ratio as well to their experience but that is almost more important than the amount of experience they have yep you know awesome you can have you can have 20 years of experience and mm. i mean maybe but have mixed results but a different mindset Culture. yeah yeah right so i was that's what i was kind of looking for i was like maybe this person doesn't have a lot of experience in remote sales mm -hmm. but after asking them certain questions how can i understand where they were a high performer in mm -hmm. another area mm -hmm. or what their values are mm -hmm. and what experience they already do have how will that align with what they're trying to get into you know, etc So that's another awesome. thing to keep in mind like awesome. we're all high we're all a high performer in some sort of way you just got to bring it to the, the limelight awesome so uh what motivated you to being a sales professional 
to also experiment and explore the possibility of sales recruitment specialist yeah so uh <laughs> i get also the the just getting into sales in general so another story time um uh, you know i started in 2021 right january 2021 was height of covid you know lots yeah, was going yeah. on in the world at the time i was a 19 year old in college uh, and i was didn't really have much going on you know all my classes were remote I wasn't able really to go anywhere or do anything. My social life was kind of gone. So I was like, you know, I can be, I can throw a pity party about this and, and waste away another two years of my life. Or I can use this time to give me a head start post-grad. So I, I took the latter uh, approach. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was like, how can I use this time while everything in terms of finances and a lot of other things are taken care of for me? I can go to class and, and I, I enjoy college, you know, uh, that's, that's another thing we can maybe get into a little, a little bit that the beta <laughs> y yes or no to that, but I, I had a good experience with it and I'm, I'm glad I, I got my degree. Um, but I was like, how can I use college kind of like my, the, 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 you know, if you're going to have a full-time job and make a side gig, that's what I was doing back then. Mm. College was the full-time job. And remote sales was a side gig. I was trying to develop, put in some of the hours while I had the t a lot of time on my hands okay. to, you know, explore. So I came across sales um, just online, saw some advertisements, marketing, whatever, and uh, got a couple courses of mixed value. Um, and it kind of was just playing around for a little bit. So that's kind of how I got into that. And then recruiting just happened, you know, just as I did you know, the, the, the lead factors led to the, the lag indicator, the lead indicators led to the lag indicators. I was hmm. doing a lot of just experimenting, connecting people, you name it, you know, joined some masterminds and work mentors, you name it. And I came across a couple of people who were like, Hey, we're looking into getting into the recruiting part of this space. Um, you win. I'm like, let's do it. So, and that's kind of how that led to that. Okay, so while having conversations with the people, somehow you understood that uh, there is a possibility that we can help the people who are in the remote sales uh, with yeah. the businesses who are looking for the remote sales professionals. Right. Uh, I guess, you know, I remember a conversation I had with them um, um, a couple of years back and we were talking about how business is about having a tool, like having your, your toolbox. I was only doing some setting at the, at the moment, but I, I, I it came to mind that if I want to have a, that full stack toolbox, setting, mm. recruiting, closing, client success, all these things are going to make me a more. Yeah. Hello, Will. Hello. Or fully rounded salesperson. Yeah, froze for a second. Oh, apologies about that. That's okay. Uh, that's back okay. now. But but that's okay. It's okay now. Um. So, when you are recruiting, you are speaking to the companies, businesses, offer owners. And you are also speaking to the sales professionals who may have the experience, who may not have the experience, right? Yeah. So, you know, the, uh, the, the challenges of remote sales space from these two perspectives. Yeah. So let me know from the business's side, uh, what is the, something that you felt that has to be improved mm. for those who are recruiting people. Yeah. I think the, so something I really tried advocating for, I mean, I was trying to advocate for both, obviously the businesses and the sales reps, but something that at least with this space, um, you know, I was trying to advocate for is the businesses need to be in a position to even hire in the first place. 
So something I would tell, say, I, I, I say this to some people are like, hey, well, like, I'm looking for a good position. Hmm. What sort of thing should I be looking for? Um, and these are things I've learned myself too. So another thing I'm not, didn't make up. <laughs> but uh, something though that came to mind is you need to have good lead flow. You need to have a solid offer, you know, that has good fulfillment and success rate. And you need to be able to have a system that's already working in place. So my minimums when it came to working with a business and, you know, when I was working at that, you know, with coaching sales, they had really solid businesses. So that was already taken care of. I was just more so connecting with the sales rep, doing like a 15 minute phone call with them, asking some questions and then putting this to the pipeline. And uh, then I was the recruiter. But when it came to understanding what sort of things need to be in place for the business, I was like, all right, it needs to be like 50 to 100K minimum in the space in revenue per month. Below that, they're not going to be able to sufficiently have a salesperson. Yeah. After that, should be having 50 to 100K per month revenue. Exactly. Minimum. Yeah. Uh, you know, the more the better, because that means they have they have a service that's already in place. They've been in the business for a couple and of years. They should be able to uh, continue the marketing activity. One hundred percent. You talk to any reps in this. Yeah, exactly. You talk to any reps. Should be a <laughs> indicator for us to understand them. Sure. And you talk to any reps in the space. They're like, you know, some people. And, and it means natural right now. And it's something we can get into is um, one of James Lawrence's philosophies of how to succeed as a, as a rep in the remote sales space. But something that happens a lot is someone- James Watson. I'm sorry, what's up? What, you were saying something, James? James Lawrence. Do you know James? James, I, I, I didn't uh, get the second word, James Watson. Oh, sorry. I'll put it in the chat. James Lawrence. So, um, okay, okay. Is... James Lawrence. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know him. Yeah. Oh, you know him. Yeah, great, great guy. Um, but he has developed his own like offer and and service with trying to coach people on the importance of having multiple offers. Yes, so that's something we get into a few minutes. But yeah, the reason that's important is a lot of sales reps they end up on an offer. It's really good. They're making 10K for two, three months in a row. And then the company or the agency changes their marketing and their branding and lead flow is gone. It goes down. Yeah. It goes down. So that's another reason why I also recommend before getting into closing. And this, obviously, once again, you can get a closing role without setting. It's the same skills. Mm. Mm. But doing setting before closing, getting that full stack experience is invaluable to a business owner because it, when things go a little, let's say, you know, maybe you're on a closing role, you're getting inbound calls as an inbound closing gig. All you're doing is the calls are placed on your calendar. You have five calls a day. You're hopping on Zoom for an hour each. That's your day. You just got to close the deals. Mm. But um, if things kind of die out and you're not able you know, and you're not getting those calls, being able to kind of do your own setting, you mm. know, self-setting, you, you make the calls yourself and you get in contact with people on the lists or someone outside of your, the offers yeah. list, get in contact, setting onto your own calendar and mm. then doing the closing call, being able to do that is really, really good. Yep. Um, but yeah, so that's why it's really important to kind of have that full experience yeah. And, you know, for business owners to have their stuff in place. Yeah. So for the business owners, as you said, a good lead flow, solid offer, fulfillment, and then a success rate, or, which has to be there before they actually wanted to get into recruitment of more setters or more thing. At least they may spend little time on uh, setting and closing earlier. That has to be a working system, right? And yes. they have a lead marketing campaigns going on with one or two setters or one close or something like that. Then they can scale much better. Yes. For that, they need a marketing budget and then they should be a promising of 
uh, at least a continuation of the offer for some time. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah. So what did you see as the average longevity of these offers actually? Because I come to remote sales, um, expecting that big companies like uh, businesses like Tony Robbins, Grand Card, and all that stuff. Um, I thought it's a regular activity. Once I jump in, it is forever, unless and until ha, I I take a decision that I will I will not work. But yeah, the reality is completely different. At least from my angle, the based on my it experience, is. my very it's the truth. Six months experience. Yeah. So, what do you think is the longevity of these offers uh, of the companies or the offers, the businesses? So. The, the businesses and the offers themselves, they can be around for a long time, but in turn, because it's, you know, for some of these agencies, the, the offer owner is going to do their thing. In terms of longevity of having a sales team where people are making good money in the remote sales space as a closer or a setter, hmm. different story. <laughs> I'll say an average. Businesses the exist. Average, Businesses yeah, yeah. exist, but sales teams may exit. <laughs> well said. Exactly. Yep. The offer can stay around for a long time because the, you know, the business owner, you know, they're going to do their thing. But yeah, for the sales teams, I would say longevity can be for average offers, maybe three to six, if not 12 months. And then really good offers that where people are staying, there isn't um, you know, high turnover and people are making good money one to two years. Mm, now it's not a long time, right? It's, it's not a long time. Cause that's, that's kind of the averages. And that's why, um, you know, with someone like James, it's really important to learn how to present and, and JD, JD and James follow the same, the same principles. Yep. Putting yourself as a creating strategic partnerships creating your, your own business. So, you know, my brand is the Will Bill brand, um, but creating your own name, your own brand and creating these partnerships and creating yourself as a business instead of as a employee or a job seeker changes the game mm. because you're presenting yourself as a person with unique value that isn't just looking for a paycheck there you're you're looking <laughs> for you're looking to create a relationship and obviously yes what you're signing up for boundaries are uh, another thing i've been hearing a lot of which is really i'm really glad i am hearing this um create boundaries if if an offer owner is expecting you to we like to call it a 10 percent entrepreneur you don't want that if create boundaries like if you're signing up to mm. do inbound closing calls and five closes a day. And that's what you agree to. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's what you're, you agreed to. Uh, mm -hmm. they, they shouldn't expect you to go out and generate your own leads. However, um, you know, having as much, as many skills and as much experience as you can to help in those, those ebbs and flows and those dips, that's going to help you out a lot. So the idea is to, have those relationships and those partnerships, have the skill sets to succeed, but also having the boundaries to do what you sign and up. All for. of these should align with your inner values, inner, inner absolutely core, core life that yes, you want integrity. To yeah, uh, my a lot of my values um, are around you know having good integrity, um, seeking to get better each day. Mm -hmm. treating other, you know, doing my best to have as altruistic of a mindset as I can, you know, putting others, you know, before myself, learning from them, you know, having a sense of empathy and curiosity. These are all things important to me. So yes, well said, follow your values and work with people that also, um, you know, sharing those values, but also will complement your values if they're different. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we have the same value like uh, helping the other person the way that we can whenever we possible. That's why we are doing this show now. <laughs> I'm glad. Awesome. 
So you shared about your um, setter experience and out of that some real-time practical insights to become a better setter. You shared about being able to uh, becoming a full stack sales professional will be more valuable to the business owner. You also shared business owners should have few things in place before they get in or uh, hiring these salespeople. You mentioned that one year to three years is the average uh, a better performing uh, remote sales activity with, for the sales professionals. Yeah. Um, I actually draw a line saying uh, businesses exist, but the sales activity may exit. <laughs> I like that. You should you, you should quote that. <laughs> <laughs> so I I I, I understand um, when you say the strategic partnerships as a JD from UCM and then uh, James Lawrence, so who is uh, uh, talking about the A plus offers. He has an offer. A plus offers. A plus offers, yeah. A, A plus offers. And then uh, based on your experience, you mentioned that uh, alignment and then uh, skill set, boundaries, and then uh, the uh, the strategic partnerships as a company. Do you think as a freelancer, a sales professional can build a brand and then create it? Or do you think they need to register themselves as a company and then do it. Which one do you think is more practically viable, comfortable for the people to collaborate with us? So traditionally, I think the answer would be, you know, you would think that I'm going to go create this company and, you know, do all this and do all that. That's like, base, you know, that's like traditional entrepreneurship that we think of. However, I think we're going down the route of if you're a freelancer salesperson and you're willing to learn all these different skill sets as an individual and letting systems take care of things for you. I mean, we can go down an AI rabbit hole here in a minute if you wanted to, but this is a joke. <laughs> but uh, yeah. learning these things though, as an individual, I think that is the future. So you can have a one person business and this is this is the philosophy of Dan Co. Really mm -hmm. awesome guy. Um, highly recommend you follow his stuff on YouTube and and, and, and social media. Mm -hmm. But his philosophy is the future of work is transitioning to a decentralized system of individuals collaborating and providing value to one another and creating your own little thing. Okay, that's sustainable for your lifestyle. Awesome. So um, what do you say? Uh, uh, I really like that individual run organization that is possible and you don't have to worry about like a traditional uh, way of functioning a business and then invest money because <laughs> sales professionals are investing a lot in the coaching training programs itself. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. generally people wanted to get into the remote sales to make money and finding others, finding remote sales as a better alternative compared to any other possibilities they might have gone through. Sure. But when they are getting through the process of taking up the remote sales opportunities, they may be uh, attacked by some spammers and then some, uh, some kind of stuff. But 100%. in reality, genuine companies also charge a lot. A person from India, for me, it's a big number, whether it is a $3,000 or $2,000. And there are $5,000, $10,000 programs, whatever. Um, if that is the case, um, what do you suggest? Um, is, it, is there anything that people can also learn on their own. One hundred percent, make it happen. Honestly, I would. So I'm glad you really brought that up because when I got started, so I thought I said I invested in a couple of different programs, got some value out of it. It was good. Um, however, though, because I was a newbie back then, I didn't. I didn't really understand everything, and there, you're right. There's so much spam. <clears throat> <laughs> scams and MLMs and pyramid schemes. 
you know, that's why everyone that isn't in the sort of space, like every, everything and everyone's a scam. And there are a lot of that, but there's also so many legit things. And it's just about trying to figure out what stuff is there. But, you know, when I got started, I came across the pyramid scheme and uh, I, I lost a little bit of money to it. Oh. Um, yeah. Oh, it, but um, honestly, though, in hindsight, blessing in disguise, because so what happened was I I did that. And I was with like that pyramid scheme for like an hour. It took it took like a half hour to an hour to have my gut tell me this is off. This ain't, this ain't right then. Hmm. But what, what what they were wanting me to do, obviously with like MLMs, they're like, hey, what I did to you, you're going to do to another person. They're going to do that to the next person. That is the pipeline. <laughs> and it just funnels up. So I was like, they were like, I want you. They were like, we want you to join 20 different Facebook groups. Here's the Facebook groups. And then go and pitch them on what you were pitched, basically. And I was like, mm, this doesn't <laughs> seem like this doesn't seem like what I learned in that course, but okay. Um, and and I was like, uh, I the what happened was the only Facebook it was it's funny actually the only Facebook group that didn't have a, a role that said don't cold pitch was JD's free group. That's so that's the only group. So that's the only reason I joined it. And, but obviously I was like, I'm not going to go pitch these people. This is not right. So I'm like, bye guys. See ya. But I was like, I was like, thanks for the Facebook groups. I appreciate it. I can go learn from these people legitimately now. And literally that very week that I joined that Facebook group, JD went live. He did a Facebook live. He was talking about some stuff. I watched it for like a half hour. And then my gut was like, this is the guy. Mm -hmm. This is the guy. This is who you want me to learn from. He knows this stuff. He's legitimate. He's given off. He's given, given off good vibes. Okay. So I think it's just a matter of, you know, trust your instinct. If something doesn't seem right, don't do it. Mm -hmm. Um but also doing your due diligence. Like it's very important to invest in, in, in coaching and mentorship and stuff like that. But what happens to so many people is they go out and invest on in these programs and they're the sold the dream. The marketing is, I think, well, this is another discussion, but this, I think the space is starting to shift a little bit because now regulators yeah. are starting to get involved and that's going to be a, a whole interesting uh, can of worms. But but yeah, there's just so many people that have sold the dream. They're told to pay five, 10 grand for, you know, the gold cold DM people. And it's like, like, how, how is this a thing? You know, mm -hmm. but then there are programs that are still like two, three, four grand, but will be the best investment you ever make in your life. Exactly. It's just, it's such a polarized experience online. You just got to find the right person, the diamond in the rough. Exactly. And, you know, just like with diamonds, there's only like a handful of them. So that's, yeah. that's the good news. That's, that's the good that's, news in terms yeah, of legit. Yeah. Just that's the good news. There's only to mine. I mean, there's a lot. I mean, there. Okay. There's more than I personally know out there that's good. But in comparison to the crap that's out there, I would mm -hmm. say only one to 5% of the internet that in terms of paying stuff, is legitimate. Everything mm -hmm. else is just scams and people that are doing really good marketing, but are not have any fulfillment, etc. Mm -hmm. So that's why I keep saying these same names, JD <laughs> Daly, uh, Hunter uh, Alice, uh, or, you know, uh, James Lawrence, Michael Dunleavy, um, you know, uh, Taylor Rudder, like these, these guys, uh, you know, and girls, a lot of, you know, people, all sorts out there are really good people. So the remote sale in our thing, I like to, uh, I, I've said with some people is that remote sales is big, but smaller than you think, you know, you can get from one end of people to another end and you can see the mutual connect connections, whether it be between the copywriters, the salespeople, the marketers, the, you know, you know, you name it. We're all kind of connected in the space. 
Um, and we're, in, we're international. So, you know, you're able to connect with people on all the continents. Like you're in India, yeah, I'm in the East Coast of the U.S. That's why I feel this is the future of, of work, uh, as well as what some other people are saying, because it's going to allow us to, over time, things are becoming more and more digitized and software and AI and technology is getting better. So it's just a matter of doing what we can to work together. So, but yeah, it's, it's so important to do your due diligence and find those, those diamonds because mm -hmm. uh, once you find those, that's all you need. You don't Maybe need the best of a million programs. And then uh, we put our effort automatically. We get into what we want. Yeah, awesome. exactly. Awesome. Awesome. So the last one, you you are mentioning that you wanted to work something on remote work as a feature and you are building your brand around it and you have been connecting with the people, having a great conversations with the people running the businesses, people who are getting into the remote sales and then you are building your brand in the remote workspace and uh, sales will be one of the elements in the remote workspace. For the audience who are watching this video, may be interested to work remotely. So let us know how to connect with you and then uh, what kind of collaborations. Maybe other sales professional in the remote sales wanted to go with the same values that you hold and then the same journey that you wanted to do. Anyone wants to collaborate with you, anyone wants to get a job from the way that you are supporting them or build yeah. something along with you, you can invite them now and then you can say how they can be connected and they can connect you and then what kind of things that you are looking for, what kind of people that you are looking for, what stage you are in building such thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, I'm kind of at this, at this fork in the road right now. I'm, I'm working a great position as a uh, account executive, uh, a sales account executive um, in, in the real estate space. Um, so now well, I want to use this as kind of the new uh, main gig as okay. I build the side gig of my brand. And, you know, yeah, I, I feel, uh, you know, remote work is, is the future. So I'll give Chandra my links. I'm on, you know, I'm, I'm on LinkedIn, I'm on Facebook, um, and I'm on, on social media. And I truly do want to connect with, with you all um, because I would not be anywhere without, you know, great people like Chandra and our mentors and our connections. It's so important to have your network built out and collaborate and provide mutual value because the more people that are interconnected and, and working with each other, the more we learn faster and we all achieve our goals quicker. So I would love to connect with you guys and um, see what I can do to help. So once you, uh, I post the video, I will definitely give the connections uh, links that you want me to share Absolutely. in the group and uh, down the video, people can uh, connect with Will very uh, happily and then collaborate with him if there is any possibility i will be really happy if you both have a win-win collaborations and uh, um, i will sure. be the first person to be very happy for that possibility i appreciate so, that thank you so much for will anything that you wanted to share with the audience as a end note any anything that you wanted to share ap apart from uh, the discussions that we had as of now being a professional remote sales person or a a recruiter whatever yeah yeah well once again i appreciate this opportunity the last thing i'll say is that as you're pushing forward in your professional growth personal growth and development is right right alongside that so the more inner work you do um the more you do introspection you know develop your mental awareness and you, yourself as a person just like if someone wants to develop a product each of us are our own product so do that work and that's going to serve you very long-term in the business world as well. So thank you again, Chandra. It's been fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you.